Hello and welcome to um, this little Q&A session about the BJTC's Placement Assistance Scheme. So we know that you might have some questions about how it all works, so hopefully we'll cover all of that for you today. Um, I'm going to hand over first of all, oh, my name is Susie Butcher, I'm from the BJTC. Uh, we have with us uh, Helen Hurd, who is our administrator, John Goodell, who is our chief executive, and Diane Kemp, who is uh, She's the head of the Placement Assistance Scheme Committee. We call it PAS quite often. We might mention PAS, which means Placement Assistance Scheme, because it's a bit of a word to, a bit of a mouthful to get out. So Diane is, looks after our committee, uh, at our, pan our panel, actually. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to John now, um, just to, to start us off, John. Thank you, Susie. And it's great to, to be here today to talk about one of the most important things that we see our courses offer, and that's the placements. Um, why are they so important? Well, it's really important for us to see students having contact with industry colleagues, uh, making contacts, building contacts, and also getting that experience of being in the workplace. Because a lot of the, the work that we've done, a lot of the follow-up research that we've looked at over the years, is that placements often lead to an opportunity of employment, often leads to an opportunity of full-time jobs. Um, but also we see a difference in students when, when students of a, a come back from a placement uh, which they're required to do as part of their course. Uh, they're changed people because they suddenly realize, why are we doing all this work? Why are we doing all these news days? And then the news days themselves on the course are often transformed because of the experience people have gained from placements. But we also feel as an organization that because we require students uh, to do the placement, then that we should make it possible for students who find it a little bit more difficult to afford doing a placement should be given every opportunity that they can and all the help that we can find. Uh, and so a few years ago, we put together the PASS scheme, the Placement Assistance Scheme, because we recognise that things like travel, food, accommodation, while you're on a placement can be expensive and can restrict people from going to the places that they really, really want to. So the scheme really offers that opportunity to those students. We think that it's important to support students as much as possible where we can. Uh, so what can you use this money for? This money actually can be used for anything. It's not a case of it must be used on travel. It can be that you might be a full time mum and uh, you need some money to help you look after your children while you're on a placement. Or it might be that you're doing a bar job. Uh, and while you're doing that bar job, that's to support your teaching and to pay for you, to pay for your needs as a student. Um, and you're not able to do that if you're going on a placement. So this money, once you're uh, committed to you, it is there to be used for how you want to use it. Another example is a, a fella that went on a placement a couple of years ago, simply wanted a, a better pair of shoes, frankly, didn't want to turn up in a newsroom wearing trainers and uh, they were able to buy some, some clothes more fitting to that organization. So we think that that money you know, is enabling and that's why we're doing it. That's why it's so important uh, for us. Um, so I hope that sort of sets the scene as to why this money could be helpful for your placement. Thank you, John. Um, one of the first things to think about if you're thinking of applying is whether you're eligible for an application. And there's two main criteria that you need to reach uh, to be able to apply. The first is that you're in either the last two years of an undergraduate course, a BJTC accredited course, so no first year undergraduates at this stage, you'll have your opportunity when you get to second and third year, um, or on a postgraduate course, uh, in which case, you know, if you're doing a master's, you're only there for one year, absolutely, you can apply. And the second main criteria is that you attended a state funded school or college, or if you did go to a fee paying school, that you did that with the help of a scholarship. The aim here is to make the money available to the people who most need it. And that's our initial criteria to start with. Um, now, what we often get asked at this point was, well, right, is that it? Once I've applied, does that mean, and I meet those two, two criteria, do I definitely get approved? Um, and I'm gonna hand over to Diane to talk a little bit more around that. Yeah, thanks Susie. And uh, the short answer is no, not necessarily. Um, so we have a limited amount of, of money available to us. Um, and so if we get more applications than we have funding, then the panel does need to make some decisions uh, about the applications. Uh, and they're, they're pretty tough decisions. But um, so far, we haven't had to make those um, yet. 
which is good news. Um, but this is also why we have some additional questions uh, on the questionnaire, because um, it helps us if we have to make any of those deliberations. So, for example, um, one of the questions is uh, whether you're the first generation in your family to go to university. That helps us to, to sort of uh, paint a picture, um, whether you're eligible for, for free school meals, that kind of thing. Um, what it would mean for you to receive the funding. All of that helps us to make any deliberations where we do need to make them. Because just to remind you, the whole point is that we, we, we've we set up the scheme to ensure that those people who need it most receive it because um, often, frankly, those are the people who are missing in our industry. And as John said earlier, the placement is such a gateway into uh, entering the industry. Susie. But definitely worth, if you meet the first two criteria, definitely worth applying. The extra criteria will only kick in if we have to, if we have to narrow down the, the amount of people who are successful. But certainly we've had, you know, the majority of people have been able to get through on the first two criteria. So please don't let the fact that you're not the first generation in your, universe, uh, your family to go to university stop you applying. Okay, so what's the application process? Well, first of all, you need to speak to your course leader because every course has its own uh, application form. So please speak to your course leader and ask them for a link to the form. Uh, if they are not aware of that for any reason, if you could ask them to get in touch with us and we will um, make sure that you get the form sent through. Uh, this is obviously just for BJTC accredited courses. So um, as long as your course is accredited, then you will have access to the form. And then you can fill in the form. Um, don't wait to have a placement organised. The idea is it's, it's a bit of a two stage process. You fill in the form, in which case you then get approved. And then when you do your placement, and we'll talk a, a little bit about that in a minute, when you do your placement or when you're offered a placement, there's a second pro step to the process. But please don't hold back because you think, oh, but I haven't got a placement organised. Get that initial form in so we can have you on the list of those who, sh who, who can be approved. Um, I think I'm just going to share my screen with you so you can just have a look at what, what you would be uh, asked to come up with on when you fill in the form. So hopefully you can see that now okay are we seeing the form everyone <laughs> yeah okay so it's a simple google form um there's you know information we've just told you about now really at the top and and then um let's just get this moving down your email uh, accepting our privacy policy that you know you're in, we're keeping your information for this purpose very basics filling your name your course leader your course and your course leader and uh, which year you will graduate from your course. I've just put some test answers in here just so that we, you can see through these. And then uh, when you will graduate is, is definitely important for us so that we know that you're in the correct year, what type of school you attended, as in a state run, state funded school or an independent fee paying school. And just going to the next page, it's a little bit slow to load. The name of your school, the full address and postcode of your school, really important for us so that we can just identify which school it is, because often there are many schools with the same name. Uh, a little bit about your parents' qualifications, if you were eligible for free meals, what the main uh, job roles were in your house. And then this one, uh, if you are, have been looked after or in care. So if you um, were to, in the care of your local authority or living with foster parents, that is a criteria that will certainly, you know, we will prioritise that if that's the case that you have been. Uh, and then we would really like a little bit around about around how important this is for you, what difference it would make for you. And this can really help uh, with the application if we end up having to uh, not be able to offer it to everyone. If you have received a maintenance land or a, a loan or a grant from your university, uh, if you say yes, you'll go on to another section where we just ask a few details about that. If you're not receiving, we would need to know a little bit about how you're funding your studies. But I've answered yes for this, so it will take me through to the next page. Uh, so we need to know which body you're being funded through, whether it's a loan or a grant, how much you receive from the maintenance loan or grant each year, where you study in London or not in London, and whether you're living away from home or living with parents. So that is the, the majority, majority of the form. There is some diversity questions after that that are optional, but this is uh, the kind of information we need for you. It really shouldn't take you more than five minutes 
five or 10 minutes to fill in, especially if you've got that information about your grant or your loan available. Um, so that's all you need to do to start with, get that off to us. And um, we may at times sometimes ask you for uh, some extra evidence related to your financial status. We have that option to ask for that if we feel we need some more, but initially that's all you need to get, do to get started. Uh, and then when it comes to the placement time, so uh, we would like you to tell us uh, when you, you can either tell us when you have an offer, because if you want the money through before the placement, obviously you would need to let us know when you've had an offer. What's really important for us is that you forward us some official documentation that you have an offer, not just a screenshot on your phone, but the actual email from who's made the offer to you, and you will forward that through to us. And as well with a little covering letter, just telling us who you'll be doing the work experience with, who will be supervising you or you know the contact name that you've been given and what kind of um, work experience you'll be doing what what sort of role will you have and the dates of the placement which is important for us as well and then of course if you send it to us afterwards we still need that kind of information but perhaps the most useful bit of documentation you could send through to us is the form that the employer will have filled in telling us what you've been doing and how you've been going um, that's obviously excellent evidence that you've done your placement. Um, John, maybe you could just give us a little bit detail about what counts as a placement. Well, of course, Susie. Well, a placement can be in person, so actually in a museum or uh, in, in an industry office, or it can be done remotely from home. At any time, though, we, we expect you to be supervised by uh, a qualified industry professional. So if you're doing it from home, then that must be contact on a very regular basis about the jobs and the duties that you're doing on that particular time. Um, the organisation must be producing news or journalistic output. Uh, it's got to be doing some of that. Um, can't really be a friend, of, you know, running a little small business that then wants you to do some sort of social media for them. It's really got to be an established uh, industry um, out, uh, journalistic um, endeavour, really. But generally, we're looking for the supervision uh, of you with a professional journalist. Thank you, John. Yes. And, it's, it, you know, one of, because there are so many different kinds of media organisations uh, now, that another thing we do ask you for actually is a, a link to the website for the organisation, because obviously if it's BBC or ITV, we, we know what those are, but there, there are such a variety of employers now. So that's, a, that's helpful for us as well. Um, how long do you have to claim the funds? You have until the August uh, of your graduation year. So, uh, for the end of August so that it's all finished up before the next the start of the next year but that means if you're in second year now if you're just starting second year now you have all of second year and all of your third year to claim the money um, so because we know that you do your placements at different times so it's whenever is the suitable time for you to do that so you know there's there's a decent amount of time to do that get those applications in to start the process and then when the time is right you can uh, actually claim for the funds to be released. Um, John's talked a little bit about what you can spend the money on. Um, Diane, anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I, thank you. It was really just to endorse what John said. Um, the money is for you to help you do your placement. So frankly, we don't care what you spend it on because actually the whole point about this is, you know, we don't know what it is that you're going to need. Um, John cited the example of, you know, somebody needing new shoes. If you're doing it virtually, you know, it might be a jacket or a shirt or something, because that's frankly the only thing people are going to see. Um, it, it might be things like a, a you know, decent microphone, because, you know, one of the problems if you are doing it remotely is, uh, you know, pictures are usually fine, but the sound may not be quite as good. Um, so we really don't mind at all. We will ask you to give you some feed to give us some feedback on what you spent it on and that's not for any reason other than for our own information it really helps us to understand the kind of costs people have um, and what they they're using the money for and therefore for us to think in for future years was that enough do we need to rethink this or uh, any of the processes so we will ask you for feedback but honestly it's absolutely not to say well, you shouldn't have spent it on that there is no conditionality put on it when you get sent the money it's yours yeah. No receipts required or anything like that. So you don't have to keep track of your receipts for travel or anything like that. We, we totally understand that placements cost money uh, in, in all different ways and it's for you to spend as you like. Um, 
I think the only other thing is if you have applied and been successful for this uh, scheme before, I'm sorry, you can't apply again. It's people get one uh, opportunity to be successful. If you applied last year and for some reason you were not successful or did not end up doing the placement, uh, you know, that you thought you were going to do, you are welcome to, well, no, if you, if you just didn't do your placement last year and you're still in your course, then you just need to send us the placement information if you've been accepted. Um, but if for, for any reason you're not successful the first year, you can apply the second year, but you can only be successful once. The only thing now for you to do is to make sure you talk to your course leaders, ask them for the form. It's a five or 10 minute job and you, you will at least know then that you're in the running for the £200, which when the time comes, I think will be extremely useful for you.